everybody. How many of you can shout unto God Woo! that the enemy known as poverty can be, has been, and will be defeated in your life if you're a cheerful giver? Is that an amazing revelation that we should receive tonight? That lack in the poverty mindset can be defeated tonight by simple obedience of giving. So as we worship God through this part of the service tonight, I'm going to ask you a question in regards to um, your finances. And the question is, is your love in the wrong place? And the focus tonight uh, of our tithes and giving is deliverance through giving. We can be delivered through our giving. So before you come forward, um, for those of you that are in the house, um, to put it in the Taruma ties or offering baskets, and those of you online, you have your, your Taruma, your ties and your digital missions. Before you do that, I want you to take a look at your giving this evening. And I want you to take a look at it. And I have my wallet here because I'll, I'll do my, my online giving after we're done. But I want you to smile. And I want you to rejoice the fact that you are being obedient to giving. You're being obedient to love. If you don't have anything to give in, in and maybe you didn't come prepared, or you're, you know, um, you're one of those people who, who need to, um, in that thought process of, well, I just need to pray about it, or I just can't afford to, or I'm just not there yet. Well, I want to ask you the question, if you're thinking those things, is it because your love is in the wrong place? So if you turn with me into First Timothy 6, 7 through 11, we've heard this verse mentioned many times, but I want to, I want to tie it into our giving. So in 1 Timothy 6, 7, uh, it says this, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. You know, if, if we end this life in a casket before Christ returns, we're not carrying anything that we acquired in this lifetime. The only thing that we're going to take with us um, in that body is going to be the outfit that someone put on us. That's it. You know, even then we can't enjoy it because we either are going to be with Christ, dressed in a robe of righteousness, or in hell, and I don't know what you're going to be dressed like if you end up there. But let's not focus on that. Let's focus on, see, this money issue, um, if we're not giving, is tied into our love. In verse 8, in having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But that they will be rich, fall into temptation, and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which draw men in destruction and perdition. Well, what does that mean? mean well in verse 8 having fruit and raiment let us be let us be content with what we have and praise god for what he has given us but what he has given us should be a tool that we should use to expand the kingdom why because in verse 7 we can't take anything with us so my uh, another question is um do you own your money or does money own you because if you're not giving, then money owns you, and you're not looking at it as a tool. I'm going to repeat that again. If you can't give um, because you just aren't there yet in the word, well, your love's in the wrong place, and money is owning you. Because you think you just will not have enough instead of looking at your money as a tool to expand the kingdom by giving into this storehouse or just by blessing other people in general. Verse 10, for the love of money is the root of all evil. For the love of money. 
So is your, is your love in the wrong place? Is your love into money or is into God? If it's into God, you're, you can't wait to give. You know, I just found out this week, and here's why I'm saying what I'm saying. I just found out this week that tomorrow I'll be receiving a holiday bonus check. And immediately, the thought that came to my mind is what I couldn't spend. The thought was not how can I spend this on me, but where can I give it to? I'm already planning. Okay, well, I have my taruma. I have my tithe. I have my offering. Well, that's, that's, that's already in my head. But then I'm thinking, okay, well, where can I sow it? Hello. If when you receive extra and it's immediately, what can I do for me? Then money owns you and you love money. I'm just saying. I'm going to continue because there is good news. What I'm about ready to finish. But in verse 10 it says, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many, with many sorrows. See, when we have the love of money, we will never have enough. And, and we will constantly go after deceitful lusts, which means you'll err from your faith. Hmm. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love. Notice verse 10 talks about love, but now verse 11 talks about godly love. So follow after that love, love patient, and meekness. So here's good news to those of you that are giving. We have the 12 blessings of a tither. And I know many of you have heard these things, but have you heard them and just haven't seen them operate in your life? You know, as Bishop talked on Sunday, I would encourage you, for those of you that are in the house, take a look at your card. If you have, you know, if you're doing cash giving, it's in the envelope. And literally, let let Jesus come into your heart with the 12 blessings of a tither. Because if they're not operating in your life and you've seen these cards, then for the love of God, get converted so these begin to operate in your life. Because this is good news. It's, well, I'm going to say it this way. It's great news. The fact that a loving God is into our finances. Because he knows we need finances to survive, but he also wants us to be blessed so much that we can be a blessing to others. So go ahead and, and come forward uh, with your cash or check offerings in the house. For those of you online, I encourage you again to, to use the buttons online. Let me just pray over your offering real quick before I turn the, the service over to an amazing pastor, an amazing man of God, Pastor Aaron. But Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for those that are, that are giving in the house online. I thank you that these 12 blessings of a tither, that they will see and know and they will become life in their life and my life in included, so we can truly fulfill the call of God on each one of our lives and in this ministry. And all those agreed said,